Oh yeah, and uh, and and I do love chocolate. I just actually have found very few people that don't like, ch like chocolate. But this is um, it, it, there are many. I mean, I've been very much interested exactly on that question because there are certain instances, of course, where you see people um, that are morbidly obese that where the notion of control of food is is basically almost impossible, where they, they don't want to be obese. I've never encountered anybody that wants to be obese. So I've been intrigued. That was the first question in my brain when I was saying, we're seeing these changes in the conditioning responses, in the ability to control in people that are addicted. But the behavior is similar to that, that you see in people that are morbidly obese. So I've started to actually systematically, that's how I started to use uh, with my colleagues, uh, again, uh, imaging to understand the brain. And again, dopamine is very important. Dopamine um, drives the motivation to it. So if you put uh, in animals, you can actually predict how much an animal is willing to press a lever uh, in order to get the food on the basis of how much that stimuli is releasing dopamine. So the more it releases dopamine, the more the drive to get the food. Now, why, why is it that some people are more sensitive to food versus something else, or more sensitive to chocolate versus french fries? Well, again, these, uh, food is more complicated than drugs, because in drugs, what you start with is the um, rewarding responses. With food, what drives uh, eating behavior is um, chemical signaling that are aiming at maintaining an, a balance of calories and of energy requirements that responds to chemical signals that are just all throughout your body. That's one. And then the other one, pleasure and reward. Food can be very, very rewarding and reinforcing. And I would put the concept for that most people that overeat and uh, we all overeat here or there, do it because food is pleasurable. And also because food can decrease anxiety. So in a stressful situation, um, you can eat and that will decrease uh, stress responses in your body. So, so, so food has the function of maintaining energy to activate uh, reward hedonic centers and to also uh, decrease, decrease stress. So it's not aleatory that we have coined this, this term of comfort food, because it does decrease stress responses. Now, when we are satiated, normally, and where glucose signals are saying you have enough energy, you can overcome the normal satiety response by putting food that you remember and you know tastes very, very good. So it's, again, I don't think that it's aleatory that um, you have dessert, and dessert, one of the desserts is a chocolate, right? Because you may be satiated, and there's no more dopamine that's going to be uh, triggered by, by seeing a piece of chicken at that point, but maybe triggered by a conditioned response that you have with that particular chocolate. So just like we were discussing with drugs, where you've got condition, even if you are satiated, if you bring a stimuli that's salient enough because you've had it in the past and it tastes very, very good, that will trigger the release of dopamine that will drive you to eat it. Why do some of us fall into compulsive patterns and others do not? Many factors are going to be playing roles there. Again, aspects of vulnerability, but also um, conditions. Uh, lo look around yourself when, when you're in an airport and they cancel the flights you'll immediately see people going in there and start to eat. So when you are stressed, you're much more likely to fall into one of these patterns of compulsively eat more food that you wanted to do. And this again has to do with some of these conditioned responses. So the, the circuitry that uh, is not surprising because uh, our brains did not evolve at all for us to take drugs, no. What happened was that uh, by just randomness of nature, certain chemicals, which we call drugs, are able to activate the same circuits that develop there in our brain to ensure that we will engage in appetitive behaviors. So therefore, it's not surprising that there's such a tremendous overlap. 
And the question that emerges is, why is then, though, that if this is such an important uh, process for survival, could it be that it goes wrong in such a way that people compulsively overeat and become obese at the expense of their own well-being? Well, uh, of course, this is of great interest because we are facing a massive uh, obesity epidemic that is affecting the health of our societies. And this is not just a problem in the United States, it's a problem everywhere. And this has to do with the uh, social factors of uh, easy access to food, food availability, diversity of food, food that is um, extraordinarily appealing, that creates these condition responses much more powerfully than the original food that we would eat um, did. So we've got into the art of manage the most powerful food reinforcer that for me, I would sort of say is chocolate, but for someone else it may be something else. But it's not just one chocolate. I can go there and there's all of this diversity of chocolates. So I'm conditioned and if I take these chocolates and I get satiated by the taste, I can turn around to the left and there's all of this other variety that is novel and intriguing. So we generated a system where many times actually I ask myself, no wonder we have a problem of obesity in this country. I am surprised we don't have even a more serious one because we are conditioned to this diversity of food. Food stimuli are everywhere. I walk and now I'm in New York City and I'm, oh my God, I walk and there are all of these, these stores showing this, the most appealing food and I'm conditioned to it. I mean, everybody's conditioned to it. I've done, sort of, we've done the studies. And just like when you are actually, I was commenting to you the story where you see that drug in a person that's addicted to drugs and you get the conditioned stimuli. We've some, done exactly the same study with food. People that are not obese, but you show them the food when they are food deprived and you have exactly the same response. Dopamine system gets activated you see the food, the dopamine system gets activated and that engages the motivational drive. So that's why when you go and see Godiva's chocolates on the glass, you want them. You want them. Of course you want them. And what you have to do is say to your brain, your frontal cortex, no, I'm not going to eat it. No. So you have to inhibit. So we're constantly inhibiting. So that's what's happened to us when we get exposed to all of these food stimuli all over the place. We have to inhibit prepotent responses to want to eat it. It's just the way that our brain is, is hardwired. And that's a dopaminergic um, modulate, modulated reaction. Mm -hmm.